Hey guys, memes here. So, uh, apparently Zero Hedge's Twitter account was permanently deleted the other day. At first I heard this and that started to give me some concern. It's like, oh, well, what's, what's happening? Because apparently they were deplatformed. Now the question is, is this because they were spreading fake news? Is this because they happened to dox a particular individual, which was, I believe, one of the terms cited? Or is there even more to the story here? Just because a lot of times, especially when you get somebody with his hundreds of thousands of subscribers and something, and they have a l large reach and everything, you're like, what's going on? Was this political? Or were they, as some say, perhaps up to a little bit of sketchy behavior or something? I'm not a big fan of deplatforming or anything, but at the same time, if you're going to go around and perhaps do something that may potentially cause individuals harm, that ain't cool. So we have this article we're going to go over real quick over at Business Insider here, and uh, as we can see from the title here, finance blog Zero Hedge was banned from Twitter for Wuhan coronavirus misinformation. It's not the first time publication has raised eyebrows. And as we go over here, basically Zero Hedge kind of came into Time and I came into a lot of the mainstream light right around 2008 with the financial crisis as naming it Zero Hedge. Yeah, no, they cover a lot of different finance and everything uh, types of information. So folks that are looking to get uh, any type of financial advice, guidance, kind of views that may fit their particular worldview as well. That's the thing. We have the internet. We now have choice. We got more than just four, five, and seven on the old uh, telly tube anymore. So, and as we can see, according to Business Insider, one of their bullet points is the site has been described as far right and pro Trump. After it was first established as a strong voice offering counter culture takes in finance and politics. That's fair enough. No, I mean, they're entitled to their opinion. They're entitled to their views, like we all are as well. But as we delve down a little bit, let's, uh, let's just take a look here. The financial blog Zero Hedge was permanently suspended from Twitter on Friday after it published an article identifying a Chinese scientist it claimed created the deadly Wuhan coronavirus. I believe, from what I remember, because I'm pretty sure I did look at that article at the time, um... Basically, they were asking the question, is this the man? Yes, it's highly implied that they're alluding to, dude man may have created the coronavirus and stuff like that. And if you don't have it, from what I understand is, this was publicly available information. This essentially was on either the university or whatever clinic or site it was. It was publicly listed on the internet. The head of this research facility along with the individual's phone number as well. Okay, so is this doxing? Some people would say, okay, all of a sudden you just went from a little site and you just made it that much easier. So, and then we get into the whole question of what is doxing? How many steps do you need to go through before it is doxing? If you just search someone's name or something and all of a sudden it comes up, it's like, well, is, is that not publicly available, or do we have to go through steps? Do you have to reverse image search something? That's a discussion for another time, because I think there's is actually a easier answer over here. So let's, uh, let's keep on going. And then apparently a report from BuzzFeed News first captured on the controversy, which labeled Zero Hedge a far-right and pro-Trump news site, reflecting the long way the site has come since it's began posting insider financial knowledge and humor around in the 2008 financial collapse as well. So, the thing is with the coronavirus, there's, there's a lot we don't know. And apparently there's some studies coming out, if I recall correctly, um, your flu virus, you're talking about a 0.1% fatality rate. Basically it can be fatal for up to typically about 0.1% of the folks that contract it. Current data with the coronavirus, from what I've seen, it's around 2%. So you're talking about a 20%, excuse me, no, 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 2%, that about a 200% higher mortality rate. That, I mean, that explains a lot. I mean, 
you don't just go around and quarantine like 50 million people just because it's a, it's a slight case of the sniffles or something like that. That's the thing. And the sheer fact that it does appear to have some form of HIV inserts there, whether this is something that the virus developed naturally or however it may have come to be, it appears that HIV retro drugs and standard flu drugs do have an effect on it as well. Um, so that's the thing. It's like, it, it, in my opinion, I think th this is more or less probably going to affect the vast majority of the world at some point, which, if you're talking about a 2% mortality rate, I mean, again, this is also in certain areas of China that may not necessarily have all the supplies that we do here have here in the first world. I tend to believe that if you're well-fed, if you're hydrated, and you're practicing standard cleanliness, and we do have access to more of like first world medical facilities and everything, and especially if it's not all at once. That's the thing. If all of a sudden you had a lot of folks, because let's face it, I mean, China's got up on the two billion people. You got all those folks in a highly concentrated area, especially within some of these greater cities and marketplaces. You're talking about the potential for easily communicating it among thousands and thousands of people. I think we're upwards of 17,000 plus confirmed cases right now. And it's scary. You're finding it all over the world as well. And it's just that unknown. That's why I go back to Wuhan Jijou. Basically, stay strong Wuhan. But uh, as far as Zero Hedge goes as well, let's, uh, let's keep on going down. Basically, I believe one of the runners of it is referred to as, uh, as you can see here, Tyler Durden, the name of Brad Pitt's anarchist character in the film, who was seen blowing up the headquarters of a major credit card company. Okay, so for a financial website, financial news and politics, you're essentially running on the pen name or the alias of Tyler Durden, an individual that essentially uh, committed acts of terrorism against uh, different financial institutions. Well, I mean, that's provocative. <laughs> no denying that at all. But apparently this was actually several individuals as well. Um, some of their reporting and stuff, it's, from what it seems to me, is they'll take actual facts and available information, and then they'll kind of extend it out, some may say, into the conspiracy realm. So, where was this? Uh, basically, they're talking about financial trading and some insiders that were basically scraping potentially millions of dollars off the top of different things or off the bottom, however it was, and there actually was an individual that was arrested for apparently taking different codes and whatnot that could be used. So all of a sudden they went from somebody that did this, these are the facts that we have available to, could this be this? And again, if, if this is labeled as opinion, that's the thing. And this is the big thing we're running into with so many of these different uh, situations where folks are saying, well, that's fake news or fake news or this or that. And then the courts are rule and they're like, well, they were just giving their opinion in this. That's the thing. As long as these things are properly labeled, if you are saying these are the facts, the who, what, when, why, and how, where as well. I think I included that. Sorry. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. W, W5 plus H, whatever it was. I remember the old Nick's, Nick show with Linda Ellerby. But uh, that's the thing. It's like, okay, if you are going to make a claim and say, okay, these are the facts, and then if you're going to have an opinion article and say, was, was this a sinisterly made virus that's targeting people based upon their ancestry for potential use in uprising situations or something, then you're like, this is a potential opinion of somebody that is going to the most extreme, and you properly label that, okay, okay, it's, it's a theory. It's a, it's a conspiracy theory, but it's still essentially, it's more of a conspiracy hypothesis, if you would. For a theory, you need to have additional information actually supporting that as well. And then you actually need to test it. At least that's what I remember learning from science. That's why I like a lot of these videos right here. It's like, okay, I'm delving into things. I'm giving my opinion. That's why I label it op-ed. 
it's like it's, it's an opinion editorial. I'm not saying that these are all the facts. Even if I list sources that consider themselves to be news sources, like Business Insider, I consider that a news source as well, just like I would CNN, just like I would Fox News. Are they always correct? No. No, sometimes you have to print retractions. And that's the thing. You clarify based upon the information that you have. So let's, uh, let's go back down here and kind of wrap this up as well. Uh, basically, yeah, Zero Hedge, as we can see, it had about 670,000 followers on Twitter. That's, that's quite a reach. The interactions you can get is what. But uh, he here's the thing, and this is another thing that kind of leads to some suspicion, and I tend to believe why, one of the reasons why Twitter kind of yanked Zero Hedge. Basically, Loki told the outlet he wrote much of the site's political content, but he was tightly constricted in the frame of articles for specific causes and courses of political thought. I tried to inject as much truth as I could into my post, but there's no room for it, Loki told Bloomberg. Russia equals good. Obama equals idiot. Bashar al-Assad equals benevolent leader. John Kerry equals dunce. Vladimir Putin equals greatest leader in the history of statecraft. Evagenisky disputed that description telling the outlet that Loki could write anything and everything he wanted directly without anyone writing over it. Okay. So in April of 2016, Loki told Ivansky, Ivaginiski, apologies if I butchered your name there, uh, over the text that he was leaving the control site over his ideology concerns. I can't be a 24 hour cheerleader for Hezbollah, Moscow, Tehran, Beijing, and Trump anymore. It's wrong, period. I know it gets you views now, but it will kill your brand over the long run, Loki texted Vanchenitsky. This isn't a revolution. It's a joke. So this is, this is one of those things. Apparently, some of the originators of Zero Hedge, they had a falling out. Is this political ideology? Is this opinion? Is this exactly what happened? Apparently, there was a falling out over some of these things. And especially if you're going to be pushing it into certain realms and directions. And I just want to wrap up real quick, as we can see there. Yep, uh, Zero Head was suspended. It appears that it is a permanent ban. And again, I'm not a fan of deplatforming or anything. That's why I was like, okay, I got to do a video on this. And upon going through this article and everything, as well as listening to, uh, to Tim Pool's content as well, um, Basically, it appears that there was a potential call for action, which we can see right here. Okay, so here's what we have, and this was a quote from the article. If anyone wants to find out what really caused the coronavirus pandemic that has infected thousands of people in China and around the globe, they should probably pay, insert scientist name that's been redacted here, a visit. The story read. Okay, so if you've listed this individual's, their name, their phone number in your article, and you're saying, and especially when you're framing it with, if somebody wants to find out what essentially may have caused this pandemic, you should give this dude man a call. Again, I, I am assuming gender, my apologies there, I have no idea who they are, are actually, but is, is that a call to action? I, are, 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 are you are, are you insinuating that anybody that has an, any issue with this or has lost any loved ones should pay this individual a visit because you're making the connection that this individual may have potentially manufactured a bioweapon that is killing hundreds of people? I think that's the point where it sounds like Twitter was like, uh-oh, and they kind of yanked them right there. Again, I'm not a big fan of the platforming and everything, but is was that a potential call to violence? Let's, we're going to pay them a visit. We're going to pay them a visit, yeah. We're just going to see who may have created a world pandemic, and you should go visit them right there. Here's the thing. All things, all things equal, if you took out that last part, I don't necessarily think there would have been as many issues. Are a lot of folks likely kind of bring this to the attention because a lot of the opinion within Zero Hedge 
goes against their ideology, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that very likely is the, the case. And statistically, over enough folks, there are going to be people that do that. However, I'm not a big fan of going out there and just throwing people's names out there. Whether it's a doctor that happens to work at a particular clinic that you are insinuating may have done something, or if it's a 16-year-old kid. That's the thing. You report what needs to be reported, and you don't need to necessarily fill in the gaps. You seem to have a big problem with that nowadays. It's like, well, A, B, and C to Q, R, S. It's like, wait, 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 what happened to the rest of the alphabet there? We're making all these connections. And that's the problem with all this whole fake news and everything. And the problem is there's so much information out there that your average Sally, Dick, and Jane, it's like, who, who even knows what's real? Apparently, we even have elected officials that are being duped by a lot of all this. So, I don't know. Do we need some form of blockchain-enabled news or something like that so we can just kind of trace each story back to the previous story and just kind of see where everything is sourced? I don't know. Maybe that's the answer. But, hey, thank you everyone for tuning in that's watched up to this point. Thank you. Peace out. And be safe, everyone.